Hunt Showdown 1896 is out and with it a ton of different graphics options have been added, a new map and everything like that. Keep in mind the new map is going to be by nature laggier than other older maps but of course that'll improve as time goes on. This guide is going to show you how to get the best performance out of your system for this game by going through the in-game options. If you'd like extra performance check out the description below where you'll find some guides to get even more performance out of your existing current system for Windows 10, 11, Nvidia etc. Anyways for now let's go ahead and begin with the in-game options. There's a couple of new options in the options menu that we can use to get a better performance out of the game. Starting from the very top, the game tab. In here, make sure your region is the closest region to you. Field of view is your preference. Even though this does technically affect performance, have this set to whatever you like, as having a gameplay advantage is much more important than having a FPS advantage. Everything else here is your preference. Heading across to the HUD tab at the very top, some of these auto hide options may be useful to you for better visibility in game. And the same goes for the opacity of each different HUD element while you're playing the game. For me though, everything's fine at default. So we'll move across to the audio tab here. In this section, you'll find Cry Spatial. This is one of the audio options that allows you to get better spatial audio in game. Make sure that you have this enabled when you're using headphones for a more immersive, better experience. Just keep in mind, you'll have to also disable other spatial solutions, such as Dolby Atmos or Windows Sonic. If you're using these on Windows, if you're using that, you can hit start to pull up your start bar. And at the very bottom, you should see the speaker icon. You can right click this and open your sound settings. From here, scroll down to the very bottom and you're looking for the more sound settings option over here, which takes you back to the Windows 10 option screen like this. On the playback tab, select your output properties and Head across to the Spatial tab at the very top where you'll find the Spatial Sound Format. Set this to off instead of Windows Sonic or Dolby Atmos. And that way, when you apply your changes here, you should be able to use Cry Spatial in-game for the best possible positional audio to get a gameplay advantage over other players if you're using headphones. Everything else here is entirely your preference. And of course, at the very bottom, play sound in the background. If you're someone who tabs out a lot during gameplay, I'd recommend turning this on just so you can hear things happening. If you happen to tab out to check messages and things like that, so you don't get snuck up on. You may want to lower things like the UI volume, things like that, but that's entirely your preference as well. Heading across to the graphics section at the very top, here's where we can get some performance out of our system. Your resolution should match your display and your windowed mode should be set to full screen for the best performance. I'm playing on windowed full screen so I can pull across other windows. VSync should definitely be turned off and your max FPS here I'd recommend capping to your monitor's refresh rate so whether it's 60, 120, 144 etc. That way you don't create too many frames putting extra strain on your system but if you're really going for raw FPS numbers set this to the first option which is essentially uncapped but keep in mind even the main menu is going to be uncapped as well. I have to have this set, otherwise this game, like a few other ones, eats my entire system, making OBS and things like that lag in the background, even just on the main menu. So keep that in mind. You can set it to uncapped, play the game, see what kind of performance you're getting, and set it to a little bit below what you're getting to leave some of your system for background apps such as Spotify, YouTube, etc. if you're someone who does that kind of thing. For me though, I'll leave it capped to 60 for now, just while I'm recording this, and I'll uncap it when I'm actually playing it. Then, near depth of field and motion blur, I'd recommend disabling both of these as it should give you a little bit better visibility while you're playing the game. Although the near depth of field only really affects your hand, sometimes the weapon, and things like that, it's not really going to interact with the gameplay in the background, which is at least not as bad as some depth of field additions in certain games. Gamma and HDR are entirely your preference while they may technically affect performance in some way or another. Both of these should give you a better gameplay experience and of course advantage if you can see into shadows better. Etc. Video RAM usage target, you can leave it 80%, that's fine, but if you have more VRAM in your GPU, such as 8 or so more gigabytes, then crank this all the way up to 90. Graphics card information over here tells you how much the game is currently using out of your available VRAM. The grayed out section at the very end is used by Windows and things like that. The rest of it can be utilized by the game. You can use more of your graphics cards VRAM by raising some of the graphics options below here. By default for me, everything went to very high, which is great, but there'll be a few things that I adjust here. Super resolution, you shouldn't really be using, essentially. This is DLSS or AMD FSR. While these technically give you better performance, I'd only recommend 
playing on quality mode at lowest. The rest of these options here are just going to degrade how the game looks, make things more blurry, make weird visual errors and things like that that could be super distracting while you're playing a tactical extraction shooter. Personally, I'd play native wherever possible, so super resolution off, but if you need extra performance to reach 60 FPS, then you can enable DLSS or FSR, but I'd only recommend playing on the quality mode for both of these, otherwise things may get too blurry too quickly. So native is where I'll be sticking. Then moving down to this graphics option section, pretty much everything here I'd recommend lowering all the way down for better FPS while in game. That being said, you only really need to lower things if your FPS isn't already good enough while you're playing the game. Of most of the options here, the biggest issues should be object quality and texture quality for VRAM usage, as these options use the majority of your VRAM. You can lower these to use less VRAM, but on systems with higher VRAM, you don't really need to worry about how good the texture quality is. In fact, you can crank up the texture quality and you shouldn't see any FPS loss. Object quality, I'd usually leave this around medium and that's fine. Having these two options higher than the rest of your options should result in a much better looking game all around. If you have extra performance that you can spare for better looking visuals, these ones I'd recommend raising pretty much as high as you can and the game should look amazing pretty much no matter how much you crank down the rest of these options. Anti-aliasing usually gives you a huge performance hit and it prevents these jagged edges, smoothing them out quite a bit. If you need this effect on, I'd recommend having it on SMAA1X, but you can turn this off for a performance performance increase. The lighting options here usually have a bigger impact on performance. Lowering these down to high or even medium should give you a good boost in performance for both of these and the same can be said about shadows here as well. You're not really going to be focusing on shadows too much, they don't give you too much of a gameplay advantage and pretty much no matter how low you have this set, you'll still see player shadows as well. So I'll put this on low as I'm not really going to be focusing on shadows at all. The same is said for shadow filtering over here, crank this all the way down, there's practically no difference. Effect quality and post-processing quality, both mainly affect explosions and things like that. If you find that you lose performance while you're in combat, fighting the bosses, etc., these are the two options you should come back and lower. For the most part, they shouldn't have too much of a performance impact through general gameplay, and for that reason I'll be leaving them on medium, but if you find that you're dropping a ton of FPS when it really matters in combat and things like that, drop these all the way down to low, and the same is to be said about particle quality over here. They only give an example of banishing over here, but there are quite a few other places where particles can appear. Lowering this option lowers the amount of particles, so it could even be less of a distraction if you're trying to peek around something like this, etc. Low is probably where I'd leave this. Down here are lesser performance options such as water quality and font quality. For the most part, these shouldn't have too much effect on performance in-game, usually leaving them at medium or lower is fine. Then the view distance ratio, setting this higher will render objects at a further distance sooner. For the most part, this won't have too much of a gameplay effect, although the important objects will still be lowered in. This will more be trees and things like that in the distance. You can lower this, but usually I'd recommend leaving it up so there's less popping of things changing quality at different distances, and this is something you can lower if that's what you're struggling with. The view distance lights and vegetation, you can both comfortably lower all the way down for a good performance increase. Finally, at the very bottom, performance stats. When this is set to warning icons only, when your network is struggling, your performance, etc., these icons will appear on your screen. You can set this to basic, detailed, or extended to see much more information while you're playing the game for debugging issues and getting performance numbers for how the game is working while you're playing it. I'll leave this on extended for now just so I can get a benchmark and see what's happening in game, but do remember to drop this all the way down to warning icons only or even none so that there's less unnecessary UI on your screen. Finally, at the very bottom, GPU tessellation. For the most part, you can leave this enabled for better visibility through some objects and surfaces, but this is mainly usually used for things like hair and things like that, so you're not going to be missing too much if you have this option off. On modern GPU use there shouldn't be too much of an impact anyways. I'll leave it on for now and see how things go. And with that we've now optimized our in-game options. Obviously you can drop the remaining options here for better performance, but for the most part these are pretty good. We didn't even touch on texture filtering over here, for the most part this should have almost no performance impact, so 16x or 8x is perfectly fine. And that's it, from here we can apply our settings and hop into a game to see how things have changed. If I were to uncap my FPS here to see performance in-game, my recording is going to start stuttering, but of course I'd recommend 
mind you do that to see how things are going. Leaving it at 144 should be good for my setup and OBS should still be happy with the remaining system resources. The other tabs here shouldn't have too much when it comes to performance in game. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anything really. Now to just hop in game and enjoy it. And there we go, hopping in game, I'm getting a solid 100 FPS, which is better than what I was having before. And you can see a ton of information here, like the current FPS and things like that, the average and the high at the very right. So there's tons of useful info here, especially for looking at how things go. Frame time is really what you're going to be worrying about as well. The lower, the better, and the higher the FPS, the better for the most part. You can see next to each of these options, there's a different icon. The main CPU option here would be the main thread time, and that you can only really improve by closing background apps and things like that, or of course, upgrading your system. I've seen a lot of people say under these kinds of optimization guides, especially for Hunt Showdown, that there's only really a difference when you actually upgrade hardware, as a lot of the in-game options don't result in too much of a change. What we've done here has surely improved your performance in the game, but of course, obviously, only really upgrading your hardware is going to give you a huge boost in performance. As long as things are closed in the background, you're not watching any videos, not streaming or anything like that, performance should be a little bit better than it was before, and of course, when you're happy with things, you can head into your options and disable this overlay. If you find that things are a little bit too weird in the distance with shimmering textures, that is the anti-aliasing that we lowered. If that bothers you, head across to graphics and raise the anti-aliasing here. If we set it to SMAA1X, you should see most of that has gone away. And the higher you push that option, the better things should look in the distance. So now it's pretty much all but gone, but things are a little bit more blurry in my opinion. I'd prefer to have it off, but anyways, that's it. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.